How many of you in here right now know the Bible Declaration from 418? By heart. Oh, good. It's long. This actually makes me happy that you don't know it because it means that you're, you're like kind of new to 418 and you're going to learn it. But it goes kind of like this. This Bible is God's word. I love it, read it, understand it, and live it. I know these words have the power to change my life if I obey them. My ears are open, my heart is ready, and my mind is free of distractions. And then you all say, let's do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say my mind is free of distractions, and you're going to say, okay. And my mind is free of distractions, let's do this. Okay. God, we thank you so much for this moment. I ask that you would help me to speak exactly what you want and what they are going to get out of this is going to be for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever been waiting for the results of something? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe you have waited on the results on how you did on a test. Who's ever waited for that? Yeah. How do I do it? Like you thought maybe yes. you knew. You thought maybe you hoped that you got a B because if you didn't get at least a B, you were going to fail the class. But if you got at least a B, you passed with a D plus and you were like, oh, Lord, please help me get a B on this test. Or maybe um, when you get into high school, you'll want to know your grades. So you know your, your your GPA and what you're reading. How many of you have had your parents had a, a, a baby, a sibling, and you were waiting to see if it was going to be a boy or a girl? And you were like, oh, what are we going to – they did like a gender reveal or something? I know. All the way till the baby was born. Do you guys the same thing? You do the same? Did you wait or did they have like a gender reveal kind of thing? Gender reveal? And you're anticipating what the results are going to be? Um, what about, has anybody ever tried out for a team or a play? or a, And you're trying to see, did I make it on the team? I didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe you waited on the results of um, how you ranked on a video game. And like when it was done, you're like trying to see where your rankings were on a video game. Right now, I see. <laughs> your, your brother? Your brother does that? You wait on the rankings for video games. So we wait for results. We like results. And preferably, we like results that are good for us, right? It's like, have you ever had to wait for your parents to tell you what your punishment was going to be? Yeah, you get in yes. trouble and you're like, your mom and I, your mom and I will talk about it. And you're like, ah, ha, 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 ha. and you're just waiting and waiting. And you're like, so what's it going to be? We haven't decided yet. <laughs> so am I going to get to go to my friend's house or no? We haven't decided yet. <laughs> just tell me, okay? When I was little, I used to get spankings. I'd be like, just spank me and be done with it. Forget grounding. Just give me a whooping. And so, oh. Um, <laughs> Serious, man. A woman lasts a good 10, 10, 15 seconds. Maybe they was dumb and grounded. That was like a week. And so, um, <laughs> you're like, you want a week-long woman? <laughs> um, so we want results. We want results that are going to be in our favor. We're going to read real quick about something that Paul says about results. Who's heard of Paul? Of course. Paul, uh, maybe you haven't heard of him. He was a guy in the Bible. He was a missionary. He went all over the world preaching about Jesus. He started out being somebody who actually put Christians in jail. And then one day, Jesus shows up to him, shows blind. him that he's real. He blinds Paul. And you didn't know Jesus did that kind of stuff. Jesus was like, blinds Paul. And then Paul was like, oh my goodness, Jesus, I'm sorry. He asked for forgiveness. He starts following Jesus. He writes, most of the New Testament, and he's an awesome guy. But Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. And here's what it says. Paul says, whatever I am now is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. Okay, we're going to come back to that phrase. And not without results. And then Paul says this, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. And I did not do it, but God who was working through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach. We all preach the same message. Paul said something interesting here. He goes, when Jesus saved me, there was a result for what he did. 
And the result for Jesus saving me was that I worked harder than everybody else. That is like, like Peter, James, John. He was like, I, I worked harder than all these guys. Now, here's my question to you to think about during this lesson. What is the result of Jesus saving you? If you've accepted Jesus, if you raised your hand in kids' church maybe, or you, or maybe at, at, at an Awana's class, or maybe something, at some point, maybe at Fuel, maybe at 418, maybe you accepted Jesus, you raised your hand, or, or you said yes to Jesus, and you said, okay, I want to follow you. Thanks for dying from, on the cross. I want to follow you. My question to you is, what is the result of that? Paul said, Hold on, I'm going to start asking questions in just a second. That was rhetorical. That was a rhetorical question. But I wanted to. Give me an answer. Uh, get eternal life. You get eternal life. Okay, so one of the results that benefits you is you get eternal life. But my question is, what is the result that God gets from you accepting Jesus? Your relationship. Paul said that, that he worked harder. Paul didn't work hard to gain Jesus' love. Paul didn't work hard and be a missionary and do everything he did because he was like, well, uh, if I don't do this, Jesus is going to stop loving me. If I don't do this, then maybe he won't lo love me as much. See, Paul knew that Jesus' love for him was always going to be the same. God's love for you will always be the same. If you get a good, if you get a good score on your test, a bad score on your test, Jesus loves you. If you, if you make the team or don't make the team, Jesus loves you. If you rank high or low in Fortnite, Jesus loves you. If you, <laughs> he may beat you, but he loves you. If you, if you, if you um, disobey your parents, if you make mistakes, Jesus still loves you. But because he loves you, and because Paul knew he loved him, Paul said, I work hard. Because he deserves it. Jesus deserves my effort. He deserves my, my, my action. He, does, he deserves more than me just going, well, I went to church today, joked around in fuel, joked around at home edition, threw a football around, played a game. There you go, Jesus. Thanks, man. Right? Jesus deserves more than that. Here's what, let me ask you this. What kind of work do you think Paul did that he felt like made it worth it to Jesus to save him? What, what do you think? What kind of work do you think Paul did? Ethan? Uh, he, spread God's word. Basically, he, preached he preached everywhere. Yes, he spread the love of Jesus. Anybody else? Katie. He preached no matter what happened because he got thrown multiple times. Yeah, he preached no matter what happened. He got beat up, he got stoned, he got thrown out of town, kicked out of town. People tried to kill him, and he still kept preaching. Anybody, what else? He, he followed Jesus no matter what. He followed Jesus no matter what, Katie. He did what he thought was right. He did what he thought was right. Did he do what he thought was right based off of what Paul thought, or did he do what he thought was right based off of what God thought? What God thought. Right? So... Here's a couple verses I'm going to share with you real quick. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, if you can get there fast enough, you can read it with me. If you can't, then you can't, but just write it down so you can go look at there later. Philippians 3, verse 10, Paul says this. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to even suffer with him, sharing in his death. Now, this seems kind of weird to us. But Paul was basically saying this, even if I die, I want to know Jesus. Even if I experience like the miracle working power of Jesus, all of it, I want to experience all of it. Why? Because I want to know Jesus. Do you think Paul knew Jesus in the same way that we know about George Washington? No. How many of you guys know about George Washington? No, he, no, he knew way better. He knew way better than that. How many of you guys uh, have a friend that you know? How many of you know what, what their favorite color is? How many of you know what their favorite shirt they always wear is? <laughs> how many of you know, um, how many of you know maybe their, their favorite flavor of ice cream? Um, their favorite candy? 
okay? We have friends, we have people that we know, and we know what they like, we know what they don't like. We talk to them, we text them, we Snapchat them, we, we DM them, we do all this kind of stuff to be in contact with them. This is what Paul was doing with Jesus. Was Paul Snapchatting Jesus? Maybe, okay? I don't know. But I do know that Paul talked with Jesus every day. Paul brought Jesus in and asked Jesus to help him make decisions on his life. Paul wanted to make Jesus happy. And so he would do what he thought was right based off of what Jesus wanted because he was friends with Jesus. And so I want to make Jesus happy. I know it's going to make this person mad that I make this choice, but it's going to make this person happy. I know my friends want me to, uh, you know, my, my parents told me to stay home. My friends were like, well, let's just go. They won't know. And you're like, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I'm not going. Because this is what's going to make Jesus happy. I want to make Jesus happy. He wanted to know Jesus. That's one of the things he did for that work. He worked hard. The result that Jesus got from Paul was a relationship, like Ethan said. He got a relationship. Colossians 1, 28 through 29. If you can go there, you can read it with me. If you can't, you can't. Just write it down. Colossians 1, 28 and 29. Here's what Paul says. He says, So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why we work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power to work through me. Paul was saying this, I work hard to tell people about Jesus. I know Jesus. I know that he saved me, right? So we sing this song, uh, you call my name and I ran out of that grave. And I think when, when we're young, like we don't think about like, what is that even talking about? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not in the tomb, okay? I was in a womb, okay? And so it's like, it's like, what are you talking about? What are we talking about in this song? This is talking about that even at a young age, when we didn't know Jesus, we were spiritually dead. We had no connection with God. But when we accept Jesus, all of a sudden he brings us to life in a way that makes us able to know him, to hear God, to know the, the, what the master of the universe thinks about everything. We have this opportunity, and we want other people to have this opportunity. I remember I would be, I was like six or seven years old. And I love Jesus so much. I remember uh, telling my dad, I said, Dad, I don't want to go to sleep because I want to pray all night. And he was like, son, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> so just, just tell your spirit to pray and you go to sleep, okay? I remember being out on the playground and I was talking to my friends, to this girl, about Jesus. And her mom called her in for dinner and I was so mad. I was like, she was going to accept Jesus. I was like so upset. <laughs> Because I was six and seven years old, and I wanted this girl to know Jesus. But then I got into middle school. And then all of a sudden, I started thinking a lot more about what other people thought about me. I started thinking a lot more about what I was wearing and how I was dressing and if I would fit in and if I wouldn't fit in. And all of a sudden, I felt disconnected from God. And one of the things that I really wish that I would have done in middle school is stay connected with God in such a way that made me go, you know what? No matter what it looks like to other people, I'm going to share Jesus with them. They may think I'm weird. They may think I'm crazy. They may think I'm dumb. But it doesn't matter because I have a relationship with Jesus. And guess what? They're hurting. They're scared. They're confused. They don't know who they are. And the only way to find that is through Jesus. I want Jesus when I get to heaven. I want Jesus even right now when he talks about me to the angels. When he talks about me to other people, I want him to say, they're doing a great job. Josh is doing a great job. Zias is doing a great job. Bianca's doing a great job. I want him to say, they're doing an awesome job. The result of me saving them is amazing. Now let me, tell you, let me say this. Jesus would still save you if that wasn't the result. You hear me? Jesus would still save you. He still died on the cross to save people who ask him to forgive them. But why would we waste it? Why would we waste what Jesus did? Let's make the result something great, even in sixth grade, in seventh grade, in eighth grade. If you're at public school, private school, or home school, 
Do your parents, can your parents tell that the result of you following Jesus is good? Can your brother and sister tell? Can your teachers tell? Can your friends tell? Can they see that you're growing in Jesus? Or are you just somebody that goes to church? And that's it. What's the result of Jesus dying on the cross, coming back to life, and saving you? Let's make it really awesome. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for every middle schooler in here. I thank you that, Lord, that you died because you love them and you love me. And, and because of that, we want to have a great result. Lord, we don't want you to have to wait to see the results of what you did. We want to start right now. We want to start knowing you right now, becoming like you right now, loving people like you right now. Lord, we want our parents, if they know you or don't know you, to recognize, hey, there's something different about my kid because they know Jesus. We want our friends to say, hey, there's something different about my friend now that they really started to follow Jesus. We want our teachers to know it. Lord, would you make us bold? Would you make us people that don't just say we follow God? We don't just show up at church, but we really mean it. If you want to make that, just, just that statement right now, either to make a choice tonight to follow Jesus for the first time, or maybe just to recommit yourself to being for real about it, would you just put your hand up real quick? And then you can put it back down. Don't worry. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. That's awesome. So Lord, each person that raised their hand, even if they did it invisibly, Lord God, would they just say, yes, would you do something that solidifies it in them? Lord, for, for us as every student that plans on going to camp, whether it's, whether it's adventure camp or teen camp, Lord God, would you do something in them at camp that will radically change their lives. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 You guys are amazing. We love you, Toronto Line. Thanks so much for watching. We love you. We'll see you guys on um, church on Sunday. And